Welcome to RC4 Wireless, and today's tech tip will be taking a fog machine and turning it into a DMX controlled device. Now, forewarning, if you're not familiar with working with line voltage, please find someone that has more experience to do this project with you. This can be dangerous, and you're working with heating elements, you could start a fire, yada, yada, yada. So please, if you're new to this, find someone with more experience that can walk you through this project. When converting your cheap fogger to a DMX controlled fogger, a couple things you're gonna need. Obviously, we need a fog machine. I recommend you get a fog machine that is using a wired remote versus infrared remote. It's just a lot easier to make the modifications to that version. I'm using a version with the infrared just because it was the easiest thing for me to get my hands on at the moment. Then we're gonna need an RC4 unit such as this DMX2 DIM. And the last thing we're gonna need is a relay such as this relay, or you could find some smaller ones out there. The first step of the process is to test your machine to make sure it works before you start making modifications to it. Once you start the mods, it voids the warranty of the machine, so you really wanna make sure it works first. We've already tested this machine. It's actually been in used a couple videos so far, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and open up the machine and see what's inside. You can see because of the infrared version of this, we have our circuit board here. We're not gonna worry about this. We're gonna actually do our bypass later on down the road. We have our fluid pump. That's what we're really looking for right now. We have our heating core and we have our thermocouple. With the fluid pump, we want to find a place where we can splice in our relay. We have our wires that run into it right now. It looks like we have a line coming here, which is passing on to our thermocouple, which is going up to the circuit board. We have this line here, which is coming directly from the circuit board to the fluid pump. What we want to do is take this line. We're going to splice it. We're going to take this line here. We're going to cut a splice into it and we're going to connect those two with our relay. In doing this, one, we're not getting in the way of the thermocouple. We're not splicing a line in that path. That'd be a really bad day if you bypass your thermocouple. Two, that gives us the ability to still use the infrared remote to be able to turn the fogger on and off. So we have two ways of controlling it with the RC4 wireless dimmer and with the infrared remote. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to cut this line. We're going to cut this line and we're going to put a relay in the middle. Always make sure your device is unplugged before you start making modifications. Now that we have our wires spliced and we have our ferrule connectors put on, it's time to add the WaveGo connectors and the relay. So what we want to do is we're going to tie these wires together with the WaveGo, these together with the WaveGo, and that's going to allow us to retain our original functionality with the remote, the infrared remote. And then we're going to add on a line that's going to go to our relay. So I'm going to take a three port WaveGo. We're going to just slip those in just like that. We're going to do the same thing up here. Slip those in. All right, now we've got to add our lines that are going to go to our relay. And with our relay, we have a couple of different options. We have our normally closed circuit. We have our normally open circuit. We have our comm, and then we have our positive and negative for our control from our dimmer. We want to be the normally open circuit. Otherwise, if we go in the normally closed, our fogger is going to run 24 seven and that's not what you want. We want to be normally open. So we're going to take and add in our lines here. Pop that on. Pop that on there. And what we're doing is we're going again, we're going to the normally open circuit. is we're taking the current that's coming in from here. We're bringing it in. It's being able to split off that direction. It's coming this direction also. It's coming to our relay. It's being stopped when our relay is not on. When we turn our relay on, it's allowing that current to flow. It's gonna come up to this Wago, and then it's gonna go down to the pump and the pump will run. And the way that we've wired this, we still have the functionality from the circuit board when we use that infrared remote that pump will still work as expected. So we have two options. We can use the relay or the infrared remote to make this happen. So we've got this in temporarily here. So that's exciting. Now we want to wire up our relay to our RC4 unit. And what we want to do is we're going to use dimmer A, the positive and negative. I'm going to grab our wires here, plug our positive in. Our negative and that's going to come to dimmer a here 
Just a quick tip. Sometimes when you use these ferrule connectors, they can be too long and they'll stick out too far. You can just easily trim them down with a diagonal cutter. Because when you plug it in, you want your ferrule to go all the way up to the edge of the terminal. Plug this one in. Now that we're wired up, we need to set the address for your RC4 unit and we need to set it to a non-dim curve as we just talked about. To do this, you can use RC4 Commander, you can use a DMX cap plug directly in, or the easiest way is to use RC4's one touch. So we've got our 12 volt battery, we've plugged it into our RC4 unit, we have made sure that we have connection to our transceiver, and we have DMX data. Now on my remote, I'm gonna say the address that I want, let's say I want this to be 101, I'm gonna say 101, at full, enter. Now, 101 at full means that address 101 is gonna be a non-dim. Once I have set that, I'm gonna take my lucky screwdriver and I'm gonna press and tap set A, and now set A is currently working. And you can see the indicator on there. So dimmer A is now set as a non-dim. If I say at zero, enter, the relay just turned off. At full, enter, you can hear the relay turn on. It works as expected. Now that we know that we can control the relay from the console, let's plug our top back in, plug the circuit board back in. We're just gonna temporarily set it on top. We're not gonna put the whole thing back together until we know it works correctly. We're just gonna plug this in here. Okay, we got that back in. And we're just gonna gently let it settle and sit, make sure that there's no open contacts or anything like that. We're gonna plug this in and I'll see you in about 10 minutes and we'll see if it works. Our fogger's warmed up. It's done its purge cycle. We've got some mood lighting going on. Let's give this a shot and see if it works. We're gonna test our bump button on top here. So we'll just go quick burst. That works as expected. Now let's do, try to see if our console can control it. So I've got my connection here and I'm gonna say address 101. That's what we set for our first dimmer. So 101 at full, enter. At zero, enter. So now we have made a wireless DMX controlled fogger out of a $29 fogger. As stated before in the video, working with line voltage and heaters can be dangerous. If you're not sure what you're doing, please find someone to help you through the process. Each one of these foggers is slightly different, so make sure you take your time and look carefully about where you're gonna put your splice and your relay in. We hope this tech tip was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. Thanks for joining RC4 Wireless. Make sure you drop a like, ring that bell, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new tutorials coming out and how-to videos.